preach with strength and I still keep the fire burning they know there is somebody stylishly fanning the flame that's why the sum total of your existence your accomplishment and purpose is hinged on who you marry my advice as a father is marry well there are times where the waves will come the winds will blow if that conviction is not there it can sweep the whole thing away the blessedness of kingdom service part 2 Job chapter 36 and verse the Bible says that they will serve him and if they do so they will spend their years in plenty and prosperity kingdom service is a platform established by God to intervene in the affairs and situations of his people. Like mama said when she took the first session, you have no stake or take rather in a place where you don't have a stake. You can at the end of the month go to a company and say I want to collect my salary. When you are not enrolled in the payroll or you complain to them and say I just found out I have not been promoted for years and you are not a staff there. In the kingdom is one thing to adore God is one thing to worship God but you must translate your worship to service that's why many feel like she said sons are qualified for rights but servants are qualified for rewards and what is sonship without the aspect of being what a servant because you can't claim rights where you have not put responsibilities are we together you can't claim rights where you have no what responsibility. Your parents pay your fees. You have no rights to complain when they ask you to wash the plate. Because they pay your fees. Matthew 6 and verse 33. The Bible says, seek first the kingdom. And every other thing shall be added unto you. So we must understand that we have been saved to serve. Not just to be saved to be in church. But saved to what? Serve. Luke chapter 4. The Bible says, and Jesus replied the devil. When he said, if you bow down to worship me, I'll give you all the pleasures of the earth. He said, thou shall worship the Lord thy God. So it means there is a distinguishing truth between worship and service. Service simply means you get involved in the advancement of his kingdom and agenda. That's where the blessings lie. Yes, you can be born again. You can be saved. You will make it to heaven. But it's service that qualifies you for crowns. Service qualifies you for rewards. Oh, the value of your salvation is demonstrated in service. Are we following? The value of what your salvation is demonstrated in service. God must know you as his servant. Psalm 105 and verse 42. The Bible says that he remembered his promises that he made to Abraham his servant. He remembered his promises that he made to Abraham, his servant. Daniel chapter 6 verse 20 and the king shouted, Daniel, thou servant of the living God. The kingdom children are born, sons are raised, only servants are sent. Psalm 89 verse 20 to 24. The Bible says, I have found my servant David and with my only own. Have I what? Anointed him. I have found my servant David. I told we tie you down. What gives me recognition before God is the quality of their service. My mama was putting a message together for the meeting. I said something to her. I said, come. So I opened the Bible and I quoted a scripture. I said that the Bible said, mark those who labor in the world. I said, please don't just write anything to say. Like sometimes I sit five hours to prepare a sermon I can teach for ten minutes. I know it. I can recite it, but I still prepare. Mark those who what? Labor. There must be some levels of work. That's what gives men what? Recognition before God. So a true servant is one that is committed to the agenda of kingdom and his interest. Service is not a gift, but a choice. Job, Joshua 24 and verse 15. Joshua made up his decision. He said, as for me and my house, we will what? Serve the living God. It's a choice, not a decision. Not, 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 a, not a gift. So say, let me baptize you with the gift of service. You choose to. There is no man too busy for anything that is of priority to him. So you see God's service as priority to you. You won't count it busy to serve. Do, do you, do you, are you too busy not to eat? You are so busy you did not bathe. You counted it as priority. 
That's how you should see serving in God's house a priority. I cleaned while growing up as a young man. For 19 whole years, I cleaned the church chairs. 19 years. I didn't say when I was age 19. I cleaned the church chairs for 19 years. Then I transferred the anointing to my younger brother to continue. I told him, I said, you see everything you see about my life that you envy. The wisdom, the favor, everything you see. This is where I get it from. You know the funny thing? I'll go very early. I will clean the church and I will come before everyone. 19 years. Service. The early days of this ministry, where we started up to the third to fourth. Then wait for people to come. Then I preach. And when I preach, they begin to see gold dust everywhere. How many of you heard of those stories? Angelic appearances everywhere. They didn't know that was the man that cleaned the chair. That's how it comes. If they serve him, they will spend their years in plenty and in what? Prosperity. They will spend their years in what? Plenty and in what? Prosperity. So that God kept you in this commission, kept you in this environment, in this campus, is that as you are there, everybody should be saved. Job, Jeremiah 20 and verse 9. He said, I said to myself, I will not make mention of his name again, but his word burned in me like fire in my bones. You get crazy. Psalm 69 verse 9. David cried there. He said, Be of my father's house. He said, As a king, I'd rather be a gatekeeper in his house. When you come to his house, when it comes to the affairs of his kingdom, throw away your dignity, then you will carry divinity. You think it's by prayer and fasting? I pray. I fast. But there are certain things that comes by the way of reward. Not everything is the accruing of salvation. Some come by the way of reward. I said something to someone. I was reading the book, The Jewish Phenomenon. And I saw something about the secrets. The seven secrets of the enduring wealth of the Jewish nation. And I began to research from what I read there. In scriptures begin to find out that do you know that the quantity of your giving amplifies you before God for everyone to shortly to his kingdom the mention of them in scriptures Solomon what did he want and the woman gave all she had everywhere there was a crazy level of giving towards the kingdom he recognized it so challenge yourself you are called not to sit in the church but to render a service are we following you are not called to occupy seats but to render what a service 